Hello and welcome to another edition of Q Corner. A special edition. Because it's going to be a CBA refresher course and we have a very special guest joining us. We certainly do. So without further ado, let's not wait. Let's bring on our guest. Here's our special guest. Who's it going to be? Yay! Yay! Hi, Sue. Hi. <laughs> it's the one and only, the very our very own sweetheart, Sue Baller. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for asking me. Well, the, we've had lots of questions regarding the CBA refresher, and I know we've talked about it before when we had Sue talk about it last time, and we said that we were going to do this. So now we're finally doing it. Yes, eagerly anticipated. We're excited. Sue's excited. She is. Yes, she's excited. I am. I am definitely. So yes. So we have um, with us. You've sent us your presentation, Sue, and this is what you did at. I did this at the World Balloon Convention uh, last year, um, and it was a course that they. This was the first time we actually have run this course, and we ran it the day before the um, actual CBA exam. And anybody who was um, attending or participating in the exam were invited to attend the course. And it was really well received because it obviously really helped people to remind them of all the things that they needed to be able to do for the um, exam. And uh, no, it was perfect. So it's good yeah, to share it again. Of, yeah, I had it a lot is. of good, a good feedback about that and how it relaxed them going into that. So I'm going to bring that up for us. So here we go. This is your presentation. The CBA refresher course. Yes. So let me have a look. There we go. Right. So let's get straight into it. Um, before the exam. Yes. Okay. So um, before you can actually take the exam, it's obviously important that you have completed and passed all the online tests from the QBN curriculum. And you need to make sure you submit your exam sign up form as well. And, um, and that must include four photographs of classic balloon decor. And that must feature balloon garlands. Um, one of the photos may include a string of pearl art as well. So it doesn't have to be all garland. It could be, when we talk about garland, we talk about garland techniques. So it could be columns, arches, swags. Um, and as I said, one of those can be a string of pearl arch. Each photo should ideally be from a different job and only include Qualitex balloons. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. That is a must. And, it, you know, even if it's a balloon that we don't sell, it's not acceptable. It has to be all Qualitex. Um, the other thing is that for each of the photographs, you have to submit a job cost form. And finally, you must pay the exam fee if you haven't already prepaid with the bundle case. Super. So that's all you have to do before we start. So um, let's let's get straight into uh, the. Well, <laughs> we um, what is acceptable and what's not. Okay, so just to remind everybody what classic balloon decor is. I mean, the problem we have now is that obviously many people are doing beautiful, beautiful organic work. Um, unfortunately, organic designs are not classic balloon decor. Classic balloon decor are balloons that have been um, sized and, you know, we, we need to make sure we see the precision of the work. And then organic is the complete polar opposite, so we can't. So showing that photograph is in, although they're both rainbow arches in effect, one is in fact classic and the other one isn't. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this one, the design that we can see on the right there is a beautiful organic uh, design. But like Sue said there, we just can't judge it because it's not classic balloon decor. And even though that on the one on the left, the arch on the left, that there are a couple of small faults on that. I'll let you guys see out if you can spot them. Yes. Um, <laughs> it would still we'd still be able to uh, score it as well. Exactly. I mean, yeah. we, we looked at these two pictures and, you know, when you when you get ready for the CV exam, you're looking to get your best work. That's, you know, you, you, you want to put your best work forward and you would inevitably look at that organic arch and go, that's the one I'm going to show. But it's, as you say, it's not it's not classic balloon decor. So, so no. we've got some we've got a few photos that we're going to go through here, which um, 
for examples of classic balloon decor in action and we're going to see um, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable how, how do you think about what do you think about that sue yeah i think it's a great idea okay let's go for this let's see what we've got so ooh, here this, we go this first one there's a bit of everything here yep so that one is classic balloon decor and uh, so it's that arch over the table the only slight problem with that photograph is that we can't see the whole design and so that makes it a little bit harder to judge but that would be acceptable as yeah just thinking about that is you know when you're taking the photos like when you're including the photos we're not looking for a photo that you're going to put on instagram here yeah. We're looking for a photo mm. that we can judge, that we can go through and see how many balloons you've used. See if, you, if you're using a spiral, see if that spiral runs all the way through. We're looking to see the whole of the design. Yep. I think we've learned this over the years of doing decor now is when we take photos, we take two types of photographs. One is the stylized Instagram style shot. Looks great. It doesn't have to show everything in it. And then we do more of profile shots, more technical mm. photos. So if you wanted to recreate it, um, check how many balloons are in it or yep. you know, do something with it, so we've got that. That's not typically one we show to a customer, but it's great for the likes of the CBA. Yeah, I agree. Next design. Oh, this is yeah, an interesting this is... use of garland. It is, exactly. There's a big so... question mark over this one, Sue. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> oh, you're very witty. Um, I, I think this one is a great example of classic balloon decor. And, you know, one thing that you are being judged on is your creativity and, and the impact that your design is giving. So, you know, something like this works extremely well, and that would be perfect for a, as an example. It is. Uh, it's that creative flair, but with classic balloon decor. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing as well is that we're talking about um, points and judgment on these, but um, how many points is it per, is it 10 points per photo or to be judged on this? Or? No, it's um, it's 50 points overall. So it's actually, points. yes. Yeah, considerable points chunk. Overall. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a, so, a lot of points. Definitely. About how and, you're, and it, um, putting them photos in. Yeah. I mean, that's, the thing is, the photos are before the actual CBA exam, so the more points that you can get before you even go into that exam, the better. Yeah, yeah I totally agree. It's, um, you, you know, we, we, don't, we want to score high. Um, we've got plenty of opportunities to do so. So, um, yeah, definitely do your, you know, giving your best quality work is, is, is the key to, to getting high scores. So this is another great example of classic balloon decor. Um, it's very creative. It's um, showing the a good use of uh, double stuffed balloons, um, beautiful lines. So yes, this is perfectly acceptable. Yes, we like yeah. this one. Is that double stuffed or triple stuffed in this case? Well, it could be triple stuffed. In, well, it's going to be mm. triple stuffed yes. because yeah. you've got a pro chrome inside a jewel tone inside a diamond clear. Yes. Good spot. Thank you. Yeah. Spot in mind. Yeah, I got the joke. <laughs> okay. I don't know if the viewers will. <laughs> so you, you can submit a picture of a wall because to make a wall, you need to use garlands. However, this is not classic balloon decor. This is a wall yes. that's been made with quick links. So it's a beautiful photograph. Unfortunately, it cannot be classified as classic balloon decor. Yeah, quick links aren't classed as, as classic. They're not classed as classic. Easy for you to say. <laughs> exactly. It's um, it it sometimes it's just not always having the the go to photo because obviously a lot of the work that's going on now for walls is is going to be quick links because it's it's a great yeah. product, um, for doing it, but uh, you just obviously need to find that one yeah. or two clients to. What we're looking for in the CBA exam is a good grasp of the, the basics, really, yeah. of um, and classic mm -hmm. um, classic decor is really is the building block um, of many of the decor jobs. So that's what we're looking for. Yeah, so yeah, you know, and I think I think people have to remember that to be a good balloon artist, you have to have the foundation skills, and the foundation skills are going to be classic balloon decor. So um, yes, that's why we're looking for those. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, this next one. Ah, yep. Halloween. Ah. <laughs> this, again, is a great example. Um, it's a fairly simple design. However, with the addition 
of the curls, it really adds a lot of uh, impact. So, and again, as I said to you before, we're looking for something that's got a little bit of, uh, you know, creativity and a good use of balloons, adding, you know, good added value to a column or an arch. And this again fits the bill. So, no, this is a great example. Great, absolutely. And the next one is a beautiful design. Oh yes, this one must absolutely. be a winner, eh, Sue? Well, you see, I looked at that and thought, this is absolutely gorgeous. Great use of colour, great theme, but unfortunately, yeah. it's not classic. It's it's no. um, organic style, and we wouldn't be able to use that one. No, it's a shame as well because it's absolutely stunning. But yeah, it's true. Yes, it's got that organic style. Um, we're not we're looking for how well you can size balloons together and um, and work that way rather than in this one, which is very creative. I really like this design. Well done, Cam. I mean, it's 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 really interesting because you could you could actually <laughs> you could actually score this quite well, except for the precision, because in terms of things like um, proportion and scale, it fits in with that perfectly in terms yeah. of use of color. And all the things that we're looking for, except for it doesn't have the precision, and that's that's one yeah, of the it's, things. It's not classic. Yeah, nope. exactly. And it's just it's just understanding that we're looking for a certain type of design. Yeah, super. Okay, what have you got next? Oh yes. Oh, yeah. Again, a really simple um, but an effective use of classic balloon decor. So, um, yeah, great, great example here. Um, yeah, very good. Yeah, taking all the colours from the bubble itself and running them all the way through the design. Yeah, and it's just going back to that, you know, some people overly worry thinking this maybe is, is not as creative as they think it should be. Or like the, as in the previous design or something. You, yeah. You, you're trying to compare yeah. the two, but again, one's yeah. classic, one's not. So. What we're looking for is this. So a really good example of that. Okay. We've got some badly taken shots or badly taken for a judgment purposes anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something else that we wanted to talk about because, um, you know, as a judge of your work, we have to be able to look at the photographs. And so this is classic balloon decor. There's nothing wrong with that at all. However, we can't see the full picture. We A lot of the arch is blocked out and therefore it would prevent us from actually judging it well. So um, we wouldn't... Be able to I see, see this a lot. That. Like, l less of them submitting something that's incorrect as in not classic but more the fact that the the photos obscured in some way that it's very hard mm. to judge it because there's there's something in the way and it could be something as simple as one of their colleagues is in the photograph that well, was... it's like this i mean you've got a couple of bouquets that are in the way and you've also got the um that little placard as well yeah you know you can move that for yeah. the shot for mm -hmm. your exam piece but yeah exactly mm -hmm. So it goes back to that, take take a photo, set up with the arch, then put your other bits in for your client, then everybody's happy. Yeah. So we've got another example as well. Again, a, a great photograph, and um, but it's the angle. So we're not actually seeing the full um, arch on this design. So again, it would be difficult for us to judge this piece. Yeah, yeah. it's that whole Pinterest or an Instagram kind of shots over a shot for the exam itself. And it lines up with the job cost form that you're submitting with this as well. You're going to put quantities of balloons that you've used in there. And it's hard for us to see if that's correct or not because you can't see the full arch. Exactly. Another couple. Again, exactly the same thing. It's just the angle. Great design. Yeah. Love the colours, but just can't see it properly. So you can't quite see what's going on. Yeah. Next one. <laughs> exactly the same sort of thing we've got going on here really nice yeah. arch but it's been obscured by that projector screen so you hide the decor yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's hard to judge and we've got one last one which is a really nice design yeah okay this is this is a combination of two that one is judgeable the other one isn't right. so the columns are perfectly judgeable um and but the back the wall behind it isn't so that would have to be noted in terms of when, if you were submitting that picture, for example, if that was your picture, um, yeah. you would have to point out that you were only asking for the columns to be judged and that would be noted in your job cost form. So that's an easy one for us to identify. 
Yeah, and I think that's a great tip as well, Sue, because again, we've seen so many um, photos submitted with there's other things in in the photograph. And they say, what what are you judging? Because we're counting the balloons, <laughs> yeah. and there's far more balloons in the photo than the than you've written down in the job cost form. So it's, it's and, and the mistakes can be made by us thinking, oh, oh no, you've got the count wrong. Where we where maybe you haven't, but if you clearly mark on that job cost form that you only are including you know the two columns, that makes it super simple yeah. for us. And um, it's more straightforward, and then you just do the job cost form according to the the item that you're submitting. So yes, because it's very clear and see those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So speaking so, of yes. that job cost form, so oh sorry, were you going to say something? Yeah. Can I just mention something before we go on? You can. Um, just so anybody who's watching this um, thinks that the photographs that we've used as an example were used for the CBA exam, they weren't. We selected those photographs as examples just to highlight points. So um, we don't want the, you know, the origin, the you know, originator of those photographs to be upset, thinking, "But I didn't use those for my CVA exam." <laughs> so thank you, for, yeah, thank you for the use of your photographs. It was just purely as a as an, a way to um, highlight um, different things that we, you know, that we look for on photos. Yes, but if uh, Cam and Luke and Evie care to send us their CBA photos that they did submit, we'll be happy to share them. Yeah, we'll review those too. That'll be fine. <laughs> Good oh. idea, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> right. Another oh. Here's another area that we often see and um, people drop an easy mark. Oh, I know. It's such a shame as well. And it is the yeah. job cost form. Yeah. So you can, you can download copies of this um, from the website. Um, and it's really important that you complete it correctly. So um, we don't, obviously the people that are doing this don't know how to fill this out, but please do make sure that you complete the estimate and the actual. Um, if, it's a tr- if it's a real job, then obviously it would be good to see the actual difference between your estimate and your actual, but obviously sometimes people do particular photographs for the exam specifically. Yes. Um, you know, the thing that people tend to, you know, it's checking your sums to make sure that you've added things up correctly. Um, because we do check that we're going to make sure that you have calculated that properly. And I think the, the, um, where people tend to go wrong is, is the the sort of the second bit when they actually start to work out their uh, margins at the bottom. Um, yeah, I I think a lot of the time is the fact that people are using Excel to complete these mm. forms and then they um, do the job cost form the way they would normally do it, print it out and send it in. Yeah. Now that doesn't show any of the working out in the bottom. And that's the bit that we need to know that you guys understand. Yeah. So you do need to fully complete the boxes at the bottom with the working out. It's like being back at school. It's yeah. like being back at school. <laughs> you have to show you're working out. It, you know, handwritten it, it, ones of these is absolutely fine. Um, also, as well, if you are using Excel, make sure that you turn rounding off because I've seen a lot where there's rounding going on with Excel. So the, the numbers for us mm-hmm. to check are invisible. So you can't always see if you've done it right or not. So definitely manually submitted forms or manually typed forms would make it um, much better. Yeah, and make sure that you're more accurate as well for for just for the just for these ones. Then you can go back to using Excel, doing it for you all the time. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Great. So what have we got? Okay. okay so that's that's the before. Yeah. The, uh, the CBA. Yeah. I've just lost Sue. So help me here. Are you good? Are you back? <laughs> we're, we're back. <laughs> You sure? We're okay. there. Are we good? Okay. Um, so we're going to go on now on to the CBA assessment itself. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what you actually have to do during the assessment process. So there are three preset tasks that you have to complete. And for these three tasks, you will be supplied with the balloons for them. And the first one is to create a five balloon, five color um, balloon spiral garland. So you're actually going to have to show um, how to actually do a five balloon, five color balloon spiral. Yep. And then also we're going to have to you're do gonna... the copy bouquet design, the duplicator bouquet. Mm-hmm. We're going to spend some more time talking about these as well, aren't we? Yeah, we're just going to quickly go through them and then we're going to do our oh, twisted a balloon twi- flower.
Okay, the other thing you, are, you have to do is you have to make two designs of your choice. One, is, one of them will be a social expression deliverable design. Okay. And the other one will be a centerpiece design. Now for these two designs, you are required to provide all the balloons and accessories and all the balloons will be Qualitex. Yeah, um, you, we can't stress that enough in the fact that you do have to bring everything that you need for those two designs. So if you need a special type of uh, adhesive or, or a special ribbon or, or whatever you use it Special for, tools right? as well. Yeah. If you're using a particular tool mm -hmm. that you would uh, need, then, then you need to bring that. Definitely, that that has caught a few people out. So, um, over the over the time that I've been doing CB assessments, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we do provide quite a bit of equipment, um, but yeah. only sort of only regular things like heat sealers and helium and air inflators and basic ribbons. But other than that, yes, you absolutely have to provide everything yourself. Yeah. yeah. So, in on the day, mm -hmm. oh, yes. how long do we have? All day. <laughs> no. <laughs> you actually have four hours to complete all the tasks, and that includes the panel questions as well. Um, so, yeah. yes, it, it, four hours is plenty of time, and uh, you should be able to complete it all much quicker if you've well practiced for it. Exactly, because the two designs that you bring in yourself, you know, you feel free. You can practice it as many times as you, you want back at home. Exactly, yes. So, this is important. <laughs> it is, because um, this really helps to, to for all of us. So when you've finished your, doing everything, make sure that you tidy up your workstation, pack everything away and clear your table. Um, I always suggest that, you know, you check all your work and make any repairs if necessary. You know, sometimes I see people finishing, say, after three hours, and then, you know, they can leave. There's no reason that they need to stay because the judging won't happen until everybody's completed the exam. So, um, but it's really sad because they walk away and then you suddenly see, a, you know, one of their balloons has gone down and they still had another hour that they could have worked on that, you know, and checked yeah, it. Yeah, it is. And, and, you know, you can look and you can look and you can look again and there's various things you can do. Generally, you walk away from it, look at it, give it the old squint test and look at it from a distance you can see yeah. more mistakes from a distance generally than when you're that close to it so well it's, it's you know you finish off something else and go back to it just to check it, it it's worth it's definitely worth that cursory check over all the items you've done mm -hmm. before you walk out that exam room i think the next one is uh super important because i've seen this happen a few times yeah obviously when you when you are doing your own work you recognize it mm -hmm. yeah but, but if we you've don't... got if we've got <laughs> all them garlands in the same room and they all look pretty much identical you got to make sure which one's yours yeah that's really important you know sometimes we have very very busy um cba exam assessments and you know it's as you said you've got you might have 10 or even 20 garlands that are identical in a room and if they get mixed up then it's not your work that's being judged so we always say put your name on all your designs you can put a business card on there you can write it on with a pen you can you know put a sticker on there anything just to mark it that it's yours yeah because we're not going to mark it down if you've wrote your name on the five balloon garland yeah no, that that's there all. for a purpose yeah yeah exactly. but also yeah. as well as if you like somebody else's design better than yours <laughs> if you stick your sticker with your name no. on there no no you're not allowed to do that <laughs> no but hey i did wonder how he how he got his cba <laughs> i did i did wonder now we know. Okie dokie. Right, let's get on with this on to the practical side. Yeah. Okay, so look, we're going to go into a little bit more detail on each of these points because this is a refresher course and we want to really help people. So as we said earlier, you're required to make a five balloon spiral garland using five different colours. Once you've completed it, it should measure approximately 60 inches, five feet or 1.5 metres. Just a note on that as well. We, they, they're supplied with the sheet that says everything that they need to do. Do they need to do that in that order or can they do it in any order? No, nope, you can do anything in any order. So, 
I mean, we often recommend that you start off with something that you feel really comfortable doing just to calm your nerves because it doesn't matter what anybody says, you're always going to feel that, that you know, a little bit nervous um, because being in an assessment process is is like that. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just sort of sets you a little bit sort of, oh, I'm doing an assessment. So just calm yourself down and um, just, just, you know, work on something that you want to do. So it could be your tried and tested centerpiece, or it might be that you want to do the spiral garland first, whatever works. I would not do the most challenging thing first, put it that way. No, certainly not. Yeah, we we recommend exactly the same thing. You get know, something in the bag first. Yeah, get yourself, get those hands warmed up at the beginning of the day. Get some of the adrenaline out of your yeah. system by relaxing into something that you already know what you're doing, and you're just yeah. going to go through the process. Exactly. Yeah, so nice. yes, that's so a good tip. Let's um, let's watch a video on how to make the five balloon spiral garland. Let me try and bring this one in. I think it's that one there. There we go. Look at this handsome chubby. <laughs> not supposed to laugh, Sue. So first of all, we're going to demonstrate. I'm on... going to join you in laugh as well. <laughs> we're going to demonstrate on inflating. So we've got the click, click, slide and size. And then we've also got the very best sizing box. So I'm going to start off with the slide and size, which um, is set up to nine inches. Different locations for your CBA. You'll find you'll get a variety of equipment, but there will be some sort of sizing tool there for you to use so we don't specify um we say um using 11 inch balloons um but you you inflating them to nine inches is a really good idea i don't think we would allow anything less than nine inches um but nine inches or 10 inches is a good size to use isn't it it is. I mean, I've seen a few where they've inflated them to 11, but you're just giving yourself no. problems. It's a harder balloon to work with. It's it's more volatile, and it's just headaches for no reason. Yeah, and the problem is... More gaps as well. Mm. Yeah, it'll create more gaps, and also you just don't know what floor you're working on, and I would never use an air-filled 11-inch balloon for a column because the chances are you're going to put it on the floor and uh, it's going to pop. So you don't want yeah. to cause any of that. The high chances. And the, <laughs> and the fact is, you know, you've overinflated your balloons, brought them down to the nine inches, and you're softening them so they are much more durable on on a on a floor surface. You know, if it's a carpet surface, you're pretty safe. Yeah, one of the things that I'm also doing as well, I do it as a matter of course, is that um, I use my knowledge of color harmonies to decide what I'm tying to each other. So I've tied the purple and yellow to each other and the lime green to the wild berry. So they're, they're complementary color harmonies. So it means that if a balloon does burst, yeah. I know which one I'm going to tie back into. Yeah. Nice. And being nice and round, you're, you're not going to get any gapping as well. Yeah. Exactly. So here's yeah. the very best size and box, which is the piece of kit we generally use almost on a daily basis uh, in our store. This is the seven-sided box, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The seven-sided is. is always the one that you need. <laughs> we always say the size you need is on the less, last side that you check, so always check the last side first. Good tip there, Keith. <laughs> so, again, downsize into the nine inches, and then going around twice to make sure that that knot doesn't slip. And purple and, and the yellow. And tight the so tightly again will create a much better cluster absolutely i mean you'll see the line on the column when you've got really loosely tied uh, duplets you can see there's problems it's the balloons are hanging out the side and people have to fidget with it and do a lot of extra work for no reason it all stems back to doing that tying tightly first yeah sizing correctly and tying tightly good job there keith well i've done it once or twice before And then our robin's egg blue, just to add in. We always like to do this as well, uh, do it as a three and a two, rather than doing the four and then adding that fifth one in. It just gets it tighter into that um, into that cluster there. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm the same. Yeah. I mean, we're not saying it's the right way or the wrong way. We're just saying is that these are the ways that work for us. And we do work with balloons quite a lot. And 
you know, and Sue has yeah. for, for years and years. So, um, and years. learn from other people's experience. <laughs> oh, not just years and years. But now I always say to people when I'm teaching them, there are good ways and there are, there are better ways. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're not there. We're not saying, um, it's like when we, I relearned to tie balloons right in the beginning because I tie balloons in a different way and it used to hurt my fingers. And then I relearned myself to tie in a different way. And now I can do thousands of balloons and never hurts. And, you know, the, it's, the balloon is no more tied or less tied than it was before. It's just the fact that it was a better technique, which helps. Apparently, I need to learn a better technique for putting my earpiece in. I used super glue. <laughs> so this is, a, sure. this, is a little, this is a tip that you're showing here to, to control the base cluster, aren't you? Yes, I've done a sand weight, and I'm actually just going to have tied it directly to the bottom of the, um, the Dacron line which we always use the Dacron line. Um, and then I'm just wrapping it in with a figure of eight to start off with. I know you have a slightly different tip that you want to share as well, Sue. Yeah, I tend to, um, I use a weight, like a water weight or a sand weight, and I place my first cluster down and then I rest the weight on top. And then that will hold like yours is, the cluster really nice and firmly until I'm ready to put my next cluster on. So I'm not fighting with them. And then once I've attached position my second cluster like you've got there I then can remove that weight and then now I'm in control and once I've connected these two together then they sit absolutely fine and I agree Dacron line is much easier to work with um, on a garland than um, using monofilament because it doesn't stretch it doesn't damage the balloons and it's a, a really strong line yeah if we get if you get a piece of nail online and you run your finger down, it, it'll mm. either cut or burn your finger, whereas the Dacron is much more forgiving. So therefore, it's it's kind to your fingers. That means it must be kind to the balloons and it doesn't stretch and, because it's a braided line. So the exactly. other thing that you're doing, which we see a lot of um, in exams, where which you're not doing, by the way, is where people lash the balloons together. So you are literally just taking your Dacron line across the cluster that you're attaching. So you're pressing it firmly and then taking your Dacron line through that, that cluster and then connecting it. Sometimes we see people taking their Dacron line back down underneath to the previous um, cluster and or even below that. And it really is a problem. Yeah, we've seen it where it goes round and round and round. Like they have shares mm. in Dacron and they need to get through it all. The thing is, though, it's yeah. not just about the fact that you can see it and it looks bad. It actually can cause problems as well for, you know, if you were to sell that and a balloon deflated or, or popped, all that Dacron is going to come loose. Yeah. And it's going to give you a loose connection between those two layers. Whereas if you do it the way that you're doing it, it doesn't become loose. Yes, you've got a balloon missing, but generally speaking, the client would just turn that column around and it's a it's an easy easy problem to avoid but when we lash yeah. it 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 causes so many problems so you're really pressing down it's, uh, yeah it's good and, and it, it's, it's also nice. i noticed as well you took it off the table as well so i see a lot of people struggling at the wrong height <laughs> yeah there is but don't be afraid to move it <laughs> no or they stand on a chair <laughs> yeah if you know if you're vertically challenged, you know, and you want to get it to 1.5 meters, you can lie it down as well. Obviously, be careful with the floor, what surface you're working on. But if we're making yeah. long garlands, we'll only work up to a certain height, then we'll lie it down and add our our um, yeah. each layer on like that. And you can see that single Thank line you. that runs all the way through. One continuous line. Nice job there, Keith. So we've got to just finish it off yeah. on here. And instead of just wrapping it in, I'm going to create a loop and pull it through the loop to tie off. And I do a double one of those. Yeah. So we call that locking off. And it's really, I think if you don't do that, the whole thing can just release and you yeah. can lose the tension. And I've seen That's that before. Great. Perfect columns, but the top starts to come off. And when the top comes off, the next one comes off, then it's not the right yeah. height. But also when you're done as well, take a, take a look at it, make sure that your spiral is right, make sure your sizing's right, and make sure your clusters are nice and tight. Good Fantastic. job, Keith. You might get yes, your CV class. 
Yay! <laughs> one down. <laughs> okay, do we have time to do one more? Th yeah, I think we've got time for this in this show to do one more thing. Yes, let's squeeze it in. Okay, next one is um, not that one. We've done that one. Here we go. Oh, we need so the, the tips and hints. Yeah, sorry. Yes, so the tips and hints, which we'll just recap on whilst you actually did a great job there. So we suggest that you inflate your balloons to either nine or ten inches. We don't ever recommend that you inflate them um to 11 inches but don't go lower than nine inches because you know you need a good size balloon um, make sure that you always tie your duplets really tightly the tighter the duplets are the better the clusters will be they'll be really lovely and tight use dacron line in preference to nylon line because as we already said it's much more forgiving and it doesn't stretch um, use a water weight or a sand weight to control your first cluster either use Keith's technique where he actually secures it to his weight or you can use my technique where you actually just place the first cluster and put a weight on top of it and you'll see that it will sit there and stay until you put your next cluster on once you've done that you can remove it and then do not overuse your line um, you don't want to be what we call lashing it together you should only have one line running through the center of the column and you will be checked on on how tightly it's packed so you will get the shake test where we just gently pick it up and give it a little shake just to make sure it doesn't all fall apart <laughs> well yeah just some, yeah. Of, some of us are more gentle than others <laughs> well I, I like the i actually like the idea of the using the waterway to control the first cluster like placing it on there because also as it's getting up to height um, it means that you don't have that weight that's fighting against you if you need to turn it on the sideways. So actually, I really like that that technique that Sue so just shared. And also... It, on the shake test. <laughs> oh, also, yeah, the shake test, it, it doesn't fight against you. But also, the balloons that you have in the pack, because obviously we provide the balloons for to make this garland, mm -hmm. you don't need to use all of them. You're only doing it to around about 1.5 metres, not hauling up the roof. Okay, yes. so there's yeah. more balloons in there than you need. I have seen a very, very <laughs> tall column. Yeah, we're like, stop, stop. Have you made it for everyone? <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, you know, you don't want to spend more time on a, on a task than you actually need to. So, yes, and it's all about reading the information. Exactly. And the thing is that you're saying as well, Sue, you don't want to see the balloons too small. That also means you have to do a lot more clusters if you do them a lot smaller. So yeah. there's more work there as well. So that nine or ten inches is a perfect size. Yeah, I think there was eight levels when they were sized to nine inches. It was. It's about right. Okay, yeah. are we doing one more thing? One more thing before... Yep, yeah, one more. We can fit this in. Come on, Let's we can do, do this. It. The Twisted Balloon so, Flower. Yes, it's um, a Twisted Balloon Flower. You'll be given a photograph or a picture of this design. Um, but the balloons that you're going to need for this is a six inch red heart and an emerald green 260Q. Super. So we have a, a quick video to demonstrate how to do this. Um, and let's roll. Let's have a look. Ah, yes. I remember doing this now. <laughs> so so you're stretching stretch on the lobes. Yeah. Sorry, Sue. No, I was just I was just looking at what you were doing, and I think that's a really good tip. Yeah, he's just stretching the lobes out, just so that when it inflates, it stretches out fully. And then just deflating it just a little bit, just to soften that off. Yeah. I see a lot of people inflating their hearts and over-inflating them to make sure that they get the lobes stretched, so that's a much better tip. Yeah, it's just, you know, they're trying to get the shape, but it puts a balloon under too much pressure. And, you know, the likelihood is it's probably going to pop. And normally it happens just at the end of your exam. <laughs> yes. So Dom fully inflated that 260 and then let a little bit of air out. So it was soft, folded it in half, created two loops, and we're all caught up with where he's up to. I've got my CB a serious face on there as well. Yeah. yeah, you can smile. You can smile when you're doing this. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, but you yeah. can. <laughs> no, he's trying to reenact what people look like when they're doing the exam because sometimes they get very stressed and they're not smiling very much. <laughs> but look at that spiral. That's awesome. But that helps with the that in, at the initial inflation being softened off. It's not mm. overinflated, so it's easier to work with. Yeah. 
You don't need to go crazy. It doesn't need to be super. There's like, a smile. Tons of time. Tons of twists yeah. in it. I mean, uh, if you've seen the video that was on one of our previous episodes with Jackie, where she does the the unicorn horn, and it's like really, really, really tight. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it is, but it doesn't need to be like that. It just has to have a nice twist that runs through. Yeah. Well, I think that's a lot of information. Yeah, we need. But just we've got some tips. Just some tips before we before we finish on that. Here we go. Let's bring them up for us. Okay. So I think I think we pointed that out. Don't you don't need to overinflate the six inch heart. Um, another tip that I usually do is bring the the heart up to um, around sort of five five and a half inch, about five and a half inches, and then give it a squeeze afterwards as well. Um, mm. But I do like the way that you stretch the lobes too, um, and then the fact that you fully inflate the the green two sixty Q and then let out a good puff of air. To soften the balloon before you start twisting it. Um, I think I see a lot of people underinflating the 260, and then you're never yep. going to achieve that lovely result that you got with that one. Exactly, or it's really overinflated, and then it's a struggle yeah. again as well. So it's just it's just that initial inflation, soften it off a bit, and you've got a much better balloon to work with. But now that you've seen yeah. it as well, you can actually practice it, so you know that on the CBA day you'll have it absolutely perfect for us to judge. Exactly. I think that's probably yeah. enough for part one. Yes, that is enough for part one because we've overrun, like we always do. We're sorry. It's Sue's fault. <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sue. Thanks for joining us. Yes, so we hope to catch you again for part two. But sometime, until then, sometime soon. See you soon. Yep. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>